Welcome to lesson six our, and our second tall tale. We're going to be reading the tall tale Pecos Bill today. Before we go into our read aloud, we are going to go over our vocabulary words. Again, I'm going to read the word. You repeat it right after me. Here we go. Displeases. Curious. Fortune, tune, constant, admiration. Which word in this means to be unhappy? Which one is unhappy? Remember, that's displeases. It has that prefix dis. Which word in this chart means you really enjoy someone, you're, you really respect somebody? And that's that word admiration. So we're going to do a quick little activity. We're going to talk about the characteristics of a tall tale. So you're going to give me a thumbs up if, yep, that's in a tall tale, or a thumbs down if, nope, that's not a part of a tall tale. First one. A tall tale always includes a character who is part of a royal family. Now, I start off with a tricky one because that's a thumbs down. That's the royal family is true for a fairy tale, not a tall tale. Next one includes exaggeration. That's a thumbs up because that's a tall tale has exaggeration larger than life. Is humorous or funny. Thumb up because tall tales are funny stories. Often has a frontier setting, or remember that means frontier is that fancy word for people heading out west. That's a thumbs up. And the last one always starts with once upon a time. That's thumbs down. Remember, that's in a fairy tale. That's not a tall tale. During today's read aloud, uh, after you read, you should be able to distinguish between. Dif the difference between real or fictional facts, meaning there's going to be some things in this story that were are real life things, but there's some things that are definitely fictional or exaggerated. And then you're going to also show an understanding to the word tamed. So again, listen for carefully for examples of exaggeration and of facts in our story Pecos Bill today. The greatest cowboy that ever lived was the one they called Pecos Bill. Bill was born in East Texas and might have been and might have lived there forever. But one day his pa came running out of the house shouting to his ma, "Pack up everything we got, ma. There's neighbors moved in near." about 50 miles away and it's getting too crowded around here that would be like seeing no other building from here to grand rapids so bill's folks loaded a wagon with everything they owned and headed west why was the west less crowded it was a long hard journey the children were packed in the back of the wagon, all 18 of them. You can kind of see in the picture of all the children, 18, whoa. They fussed and hollered and fought as the wagon bounced along. The children were so loud that Bill's ma said you couldn't hear the thunder over their noise. One day, the wagon hit a rock and little Bill fell right out. With all the fussing and fighting, nobody noticed. The wagon just kept going on. So little Bill found himself sitting in the dirt along the banks of the Pecos River. That's a real river in Texas. And that's how he came to be named Pecos Bill. But that was later. Little Bill was not your average baby. He didn't cry. He just crawled along on the dusty plain, keeping his eyes peeled for whatever came along. And the first thing to come along was a coyote. 
when the coyotes saw this dirty, naked little creature crawling around on all fours, she thought he was a cute little animal, even if his ears were mighty small. Little Bill reached up and patted the coyote's head and said, Nice doggy. <laughs> she took the doggy, I mean coyote, liked little Bill. She took him home and raised him with her pups. Baby coyotes are called pups. What animal do you think coyotes are like? The coyotes taught Bill to roam the prairies and howl at the moon. They taught him secrets of hunting, how to leap like an antelope, and how to run like the wind. They taught him how to chase lizards and lie so still that he was almost invisible. Do you think a young boy can really become a member of a coyote pack? Or is this an example of exaggeration? <coughs> the year went by, 18 of them to be exact, and Bill grew up strong and healthy. One day he was out hunting along the Pecos River when he saw the most unusual sight. It seemed to be a big animal with four legs, or was it six legs? And why did it have one head in the front and another on top? What do you think Bill sees? Well, it turned out to be a horse with a man riding it, something Bill had never seen before. Bill scurried around the horse a few times, then he slowly crept up, took a sniff of the man's boot. Boy, said the man, what are you doing scampering around down there in your birthday suit? Sniffing, said Bill, I'm a coyote. No, you ain't, said the man, you're a man like me. No, howled Bill. Coyote. Why does Bill think he is a coyote? Do you think the cowboy believes him? What makes you think you are a coyote? Said the man. I have fleas, said Bill. So what, said the man. Lots of men here in Texas have fleas. But Bill was not persuaded or convinced. He sure, he was sure he was a coyote. Here's the thing, said the man. Coyotes have pointy ears and a big pushy tail. And you don't. Yes, I do, cried Bill. He felt sure he had a tail, just like all the other coyotes. He looked over his shoulder, but couldn't see one. He reached back to grab his tail, but he couldn't feel one. He backed up to the river and looked for his tail in the reflection, but it wasn't there. Bill was surprised. He thought for a moment. Then he decided the man must be right. If he didn't have a tail, he couldn't be a coyote. If he wasn't a coyote, he must be a man. Bill decided he'd have to say farewell to his four-legged friends and try living as a man. He went to stay with the man who just so happened to be a cowboy. The man gave Bill some clothes to wear and a horse to ride. He gave him a nickname, Pecos Bill. Why did the man call him Pecos Bill? At first, Bill had trouble living like a man. He couldn't stand the way his clothes scratched and pulled at his skin, or the way his boots came between his bare feet and the good old dirt. And he couldn't see the need for a knife or a fork when it was just as easy to use your fingers to pick up your food and tear it with your teeth. In the rest of this story, the author will sometimes use the name Bill and other times use his nickname Pecos Bill. 
Bill learned to act like a man, but he still had a spark of wildness in him, and it would flash out from time to time. One day, he was out riding on his horse when he was surprised by a mountain lion. The mountain lion scared Bill's horse away and charged right at Bill. But Pecos Bill was too quick for that mountain lion. He dodged the big cat, then hopped right onto his back. The mountain lion was not happy. No, sir. He bucked, he snarled, he tried to twist around and bite Bill. Bill held onto the lion's neck with one hand, with his other hand, he waved his cowboy hat in the air and shouted, Yahoo! The mountain lion did everything he could to shake Bill off, but it was no use. Finally, he gave in and let Bill ride him. Then, Bill put a saddle on the lion and rode him like a horse. Bill had tamed the mountain lion. Another day, Pecos Bill was attacked by a giant rattlesnake. This particular rattlesnake was a mean old fellow who thought he was the king of the whole desert. He struck at Bill's heel, but Pecos Bill was too quick for that rattlesnake. Pecos Bill grabbed the rattler by the neck and squeezed him hard. The snake wriggled and writhed in Bill's grip. Say, uncle, if you had enough said Bill. G -g -g uncle the snake gurgling out the sound as best he could. Bill relaxed his grip a bit and asked the rattler, Who's the boss around here? I was, said the snake, but now you are Well then, said the Pecos Bill, how'd you like to work for me? Sure thing, said the rattler. The rattler just looked at Pecos Bill with an admiration and purred like a kitten. Pecos Bill had squeezed all the meanness right out of that snake. Do you think Bill really squeezed all the meanness out of the snake? Next, Pecos Bill rolled the rattler up into a coil and rode away on his mountain lion. On the way back to camp, he spotted a runaway cow. He grabbed the rattler, tied a, lo a loop at one end of the to make a lasso. A lasso is a rope tied in a circle to catch a cow. Then he rode after the cow, swinging his lasso above his head. When he was close enough, he tossed the looped end of the snake over the cow. Pecos Bill jumped off the mountain lion and pulled the lasso tight, stopping the runaway cow right in his tracks. Pecos Bill brought the cow back to his friend, the cowboy. After that, he taught all the cowboys at the ranch how to use a lasso to catch a runaway cow. Bill just invented catching cattle with ropes. But could a cowboy really... Uh, rope a cow with a rattlesnake? This is another example of what. He taught them other things, too. He taught them how to tame wild horses by riding them, just as he had done with the mountain lion. Tame means a train or a bay. He even taught them how to sing cowboy songs around the campfire at night in a voice that sounded like a lonesome coyote howling at the moon. How do you suppose Bill's voice sounded like a coyote? Or why do you think, why do you suppose Bill's voice sounded like a coyote howling at the moon? Pecos Bill was famous for his riding skills. He once rode a wild Mustang called the Backbreaker that no one else could ride. But that story pales in comparison to the time he rode something that no other man had before. And I reckon no man ever will. Anyone want to give a quick guess on what do you think he rode? He rode a cyclone. A cyclone is a real storm like a tornado. That's right. 
Pecos Bill lassoed a cyclone with his rattlesnake lasso and jumped on its rip-roaring back. The cyclone spun furiously, trying to throw Bill off. It went spinning this way and that way across the desert of Arizona, trying to knock Bill off by rising up into the air and digging down into the ground. Pecos Bill did not let go until the cyclone spun itself out of energy, and by that time, the two of them had carved out a deep canyon. If you ever go to Arizona, you can still see that canyon today. It's called the Grand Canyon. What other tall tale hero did we learn about that maybe supposedly created the Grand Canyon? What a fun, fun story. I always love reading Pecos Bill. It's always a, one of my favorites to read. What amazing adventures does Pecos Bill have in this story? What are some things in this story that are examples of exaggeration? So are tall tales fiction or nonfiction? How do we know this is a tall tale? Now, I'm going to read a sentence, and what you're going to do is you're going to figure out, is this a fact? So is this something that's true, a true fact, or is this just a tall tale? So is this a real fact or a tall tale or something that's fiction? First one, the Pecos River is in Texas. That would be a fact. That's a true fact. The coyote took Bill home to her den. That would be a tall tale. Coyotes and people, that doesn't happen. Pecos Bill lassoed a cyclone and wrote it. That would also be a tall tale. Cyclones are real storms with very strong winds. That would be a fact. Cyclones are real things. A rattlesnake can be used as a, as a lasso. Nope, that's a tall tale. I would like to, I mean, I would love to see someone try. I would never try to grab a rattlesnake. And the last one, a coyote, it looks like a small wolf. Yep, that's a fact. They are like small wolves. Our word work word for today is the word tamed. I'll read the word. You repeat it after me. Tamed. What sound is the vowel A making in this word? A is making the A sound, and it's making the A. How is it making the A sound? Well, it's because tamed is also like the word tame, and at the end there's this E, and this is called a magic E, and the magic E tells the A to say its name. So that's why A is the A sound. What is the suffix? Remember, suffix means if prefix attaches itself at the beginning of a word, suffix attaches itself at the end. Anyone know what it means when you have ED at the end? ED at the end means it happened in the past. What do you think the word tamed means? Tame means it's something that's trained or obey people. A lot of times people tame their dogs. When you tell your dog to sit, to um, speak, to lie down, to roll over, all those things are uh, taming your dog to obey people. Alyssa worked hard all summer and tamed the wild horse. Have you ever tamed an animal or seen one that was tamed? For me, I think the animal that's almost impossible to tame is a cat. I have tried many times to tame our cat. No use. And for our application, you're, this time you're going to go into the Pecos Bill column, and you're going to fill out is amazing childhood, creation and invention, amazing adventure, humor, and exaggeration. You can see Paul Bunyan's there as your example as well. 
I hope you enjoyed Pecos Bill. We still have two more tall tales to go through, and we'll be right back again tomorrow. <laughs>